I think, you know, when a patient is diagnosed um, with Waldenstrom's, uh, there are a number of uh, critical questions uh, that emerge. The first really is, do I need treatment at this time? Um, and sometimes both the clinician as well as the patient can be very conflicted on this point. There is a scoring system that we often use um, uh, that tells us uh, if a patient, you know, requires therapy. For instance, you know, if the blood counts are under a certain level, like a hemoglobin less than 10 or a platelet count less than 100,000, um, we will often uh, treat the patient, but only if those symptoms are, um, or those findings are because of the Waldenstrom's uh, itself. Um, we, we look at peripheral neuropathy for those patients that have it, maybe up to a quarter of all patients do have it. You know, is it moderate? Is it severe? How fast is it progressing? It'd be one of the things that we would actually think about. Does the patient come in with hyperviscosity uh, symptoms? You know, are they having problems with their vision or, you know, nosebleeds? That's an acute emergency. That patient is going to be requiring therapy. So, so I think it's very important once the diagnosis is made is to determine uh, if the patient requires therapy because a lot of patients actually watch and wait uh, is very appropriate. And maybe up to 30% of all patients based on the series that we have here at, um, at our institute. Um, so I think that becomes the most important question. And then, of course, what to be treated with uh, if you require therapy. And uh, make no mistake that even today, um, we don't have any trials that tell us that one answer is better than the other. And that's why, um, you know, being able to have the patient come to a center of excellence, ideally, um, to make those kind of treatment decisions, perhaps even participate in clinical trials, um, are, are, is very important. And I think just, you know, it's important to keep in mind um, for a patient that once that, you know, decision of needing treatment is required, really look and see what clinical trials are available, look and see what the current state of therapy is. Some of these therapies are leveraged by the underlying genomics, like for instance, BTK inhibitors. Good idea if you have the mid 88 mutation. Uh, if you also have the CXCR4 mutation, maybe still a good idea depending on how fast you need you know, a response. Um, and so these are the kind of things that we talk to patients about once they come here and see us. I think um, you know, an important um, you know, decision point is when to start therapy. Um, many patients, you know, are often, um, you know, uh, not wanting to start therapy when in fact it's appropriate to do so. And other times we find that patients have come with the recommendation to start therapy when in fact uh, they didn't need at that point in time to have therapy started. For this reason, I think, you know, being able to seek the expertise of somebody who sees Waldenstrom's patients, I mean, they're uncommon, in the, you know, to be quite honest, they're uncommon. Um, but going to a center of excellence, I think, is very important uh, because those kind of decision making can be made, you know, with the benefit of, of an expert. And in, in many cases, not most cases, you know, the patient can then go back to their local oncologist and perhaps be better informed and co-guided by uh, a Waldenstrom expert along with their local hematologist oncologist.